All right, well, this is gonna be super problematic because I'm at a weird angle. I'm sitting off to the side, over this way. That's where I is. That's where I roll. Um, I decided to hijack my parents' bedroom and uh, show you my knife collection because I've got a couple new pieces, a couple new pieces that are kind of awesome. Um, it's gonna be problematic, like I said, because the angle I'm at, but hey, we'll work with what we got. So first of all, I gotta show you what I'm carrying on me. This is Spyderco Delica. This is actually, you know, this is just the, the half serrated, <coughs> oh my god, excuse me. Half serrated, all black handle, FRN, whatever the heck that grind is. I can't I can't remember. I've, I've been kind of out of the loop of knives for a little bit as far as like researching them a ton. But um, awesome knife. I carry this a lot to work because it's small and people are less likely to call the cops on me if I have to actually pull it out and use it for something. And plus, I mean, Spyderco's, <coughs> oh my god, <clears throat> too much dust. Spyderco's knives are, oh yeah, and ignore that. My my hands are kind of tore up, but um, Spyderco's uh, Delica Endura line is probably one of my favorite. And funny story, I actually hated Spyderco at first, but now they're actually one of my favorite knife companies. So yeah. But anyway, uh, so that's what I'm eating seeing for the last little bit. Now I'm eating potatoes here. This is a oh uh, yeah professional. Wow, just knock the camera. Um, a Pelican 1450 case. I don't remember the number of it. Awesome case. Uh, probably gonna need another one of these because I'm kind of filling it up, but man, Come on. There we go. Really secure, waterproof. If I was a photographer and I had a really good camera... Ew, speaking of cameras. <coughs> oh my god. <clears throat> it's that Wheaties I just ate. Um, not Wheaties, what is it? <sighs> Try to wheat. Same thing. If I was a photographer, I'd get a Pelican case for my cameras because they are just... I mean, they are solid. You could use this to kill somebody with if you hit them with it. I guess. Anyway, inside the case, it's kind of unorganized. Um, a couple of these things, I don't have spots for them, so that's why. Uh, let's show you off my pens here. A couple pens I got in here. It's a Schmip and Washington Tactical. Schmip and Washington Tactical pen. You pop that end off like so, pop it on here, and I should probably actually put my hand around here like I'm hugging the camera. Oh, since I'm not going to hug anything else, there goes my mom's water bottle. And all for crocheting. <laughs> She's going to be ticked at me. So, yeah, this is Schmip and Washington Tactical pen. It's an okay pen, but better is a Matthew Martin tactical pen. Carbon, fiber, and copper. Look at my review one. I hate that review, but hey, give me another AdSense view. Uh, and then the pen that I got on me now, my CRKT tail pen, tail pen. I can't remember what he pronounce it, but you know, this thing. Awesome pen. And I forgot to bring my Hinder pen in here. Dang it. Oh, well. It's okay. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it does matter, actually. All right, so now a couple stragglers that we got in here. The Spartan Enyo, I believe it's called. I can't remember the exact name. Some of these, I can't remember the exact name of them because it's been, you know, been a while. But um, normally I'm not one so much fixed blades. And I, dang it. She can be kind of hard sometimes. Um, yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> um, I wanted to try a little small EDC fixed blade. Um, this, I, I was going to use it, and it would work for me, but, I mean... I, where I'm, where I live, carrying around a fixed blade, it'd be a little, little iffy, and I don't, I'm not really one that looks, that wants to get in trouble, so, you know, I'm not, I haven't really carried it much, but I mean, still, it's a good knife, one, one solid piece of steel, thinks that's 30V, maybe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, probably am, next knife, since I can't carry a firearm to work, I was going to, uh, carry this, Cold Steel Extra Large Voyager for, um, utility purposes, but it's just, it's, it's way too big. I mean, this is one of my latest knife pickups, but, you know, I mean, it's cool. I carried it hiking today, but, I mean, it's just, it is a massive blade. If you needed a tactical blade, if you were, like, a soldier in the line of duty and, like, had to rely on a folder, I'd highly recommend a cold steel knife because their triad locks are just a beast. I mean, look at that. Oops. Look at that pin in there. I mean, it, cold steel's just, they, they scream metal. I mean, look at that thing. That's a handful. It's like five and a half inch blade. What a knife. What a knife. What a knife? What? A knife? Yeah. <laughs> Another knife. Oh, we got ours. We're starting. We'll go backwards because F at the... Oh, actually, yeah, here. Godfather OTF Spike. Yeah, it's, it's legal kind of-ish, but I wouldn't carry it because you're going to get yourself in so much trouble. All right. So, we got ours. I really wish I, I had a good way to do this, but I don't. Um, this is a waved Spike Coendera. What's that on the blade? Dust. Oh my god. So unmanly. Dusty, dusty. A wave spreader Coendura. Enduras are probably my favorite knife out of any knife. Like, what just fell? Something fell. Screw it. I don't care. 
Um, they're my favorite. And I, oh, I got to unbutton my shirt. Oh, it's so hot. <sighs> Even though I'm sitting right by a window. Is this, is this entertaining? Nope. It's not. So an Endura. Endura 4 waved. Love it. I carry that a lot, actually, to work. Um, One-handed. Opening fast, fast, fast. No switchblade. Next one, very recent pickup. I have not carried this yet. This Paragon Warlock. Interesting mechanism. You pinch the blade, or both sides of the pivot here, and the, it opens up, and then your blade actually falls out. And it's kind of hard to do behind the camera here, but I opted for the Red Dagger, because why not? It looks like a devil's claw. Um, cool, cool knife. I, In practicality-wise, oh, yeah, I can't really do it well. Actually, let's do it this way. There we go. Ah, still hard to do behind the camera. Come on. Nah, it gets hung up sometimes. Maybe it just has to be broken in a little bit. Kind of same sort of idea as a butterfly knife-ish. I mean, it operates differently, but the the cool factor is the same. Um, and two, it looks like an OTF because of just the way it works. So yeah. All right, ZT05, so what's the name of it? I can't remember. Uh, it's been so long. 0561. I thought they were going to stop making these, so I picked one up, and lo and behold, they still make them, at least to my knowledge. So, beast of a folder. Um, I don't carry it that much because of the liner lock, and we could get into a whole liner lock versus lockback discussion, but I'm not going to in this video because that's not what it's about. My other Spider Condura here. First one I got. It looks like a Delica on camera. It looks so small. This one is... Very smooth, got it oiled up nicely. That, that felt horrible. Oh, my arm is going to blow out here. Very nice knife. I like the Enduras. If I had to choose one knife, if I could only have one knife, I'd probably choose my Endura, and probably specifically this one. Even though the Waved, I mean, the Waved gives you an extra option, but I just, I, I like the full flat ground Endura. They're just good. They're awesome. Look at our Spider coat. Sage one. Carbon fiber, very nice. Got some dust on the blade there. It's okay. It's all well and good. The textured carbon fiber is just awesome. It's awesome. 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 A Drifter CRKT. Cool little knife. Only about $17. I think they still make them. G10 handles. Can't remember the blade steel. Really doesn't matter. Uh, tip down only, which I'm not too thrilled about. But, I mean, if that if that's what you like, then go ahead. Uh, probably the worst knife, one of the worst knives that I own, the CRKT Persian. I saw this in their catalog when it first came out, and I was like, oh my god, I need to buy it. So I bought it, and I really don't like it. There's not really anything good about the knife, and I hear people talking. Not, not anything really good about the knife. No pocket clip, no nothing. It's very, you almost can't open up one-handed. It's just, eh. But I got it. Uh, CRKT, that actually is good. CRKT Hiho. Little... Little Hisatsu's little brother. Very cool. Like Tolstoy says, you know, this is this goes well with a suit, and it does. It's kind of more of a, a little gentlemanly, very sleek, easy to go in and out of pockets. You're not going to tear up your suit pockets. And I tend to wear quite a bit of suit, well, not suit pants, but a little nicer pants. I'm not always a jean guy. Uh, deep carry pocket clips so you don't give away that you're carrying a knife to people, sheeple. Man. So you don't freak them the F out. Spartaco Techno. Let's see if I can open up one hand. This one's kind of difficult. Ah, there we go. Worked first time. One of my big little knives, or little big knives, or however you call it. This is Custom Flame and owned by me. I have a video on that, so give me another view on that. <laughs> I did a little job with a blowtorch there, but I mean, still, it comes out cool. My mom actually thinks that this is, you know, this is her favorite knife out of my whole collection. And I'm like, really? I mean, okay. Um, I was going to do something with the backspacer and, like, you know, put a copper backspacer in there, but I just, I'm not that skilled. Uh, nice little beefy knife. Really thick blade, so if you need a small knife for pretty decent task you know this is a little expensive you know like around oh, i was like 180 i can't remember exactly cold steel tie light very awesome one of the fastest opening knives that i own barely have to nudge it bang pops right open dagger stiletto design um a little bit on the don't want to carry it because i might freak somebody out so i don't really carry it around that much. If I was going into like a war zone or new, I'm going to be getting into a knife fight, which I, if I knew I was going to be getting into a knife fight, I'd carry a gun. And I'm not one of those guys that goes out looking for trouble, but that'd be a good defensive. It's really only good for stabbing, so you have to think of that. A Kershaw Leak Rainbow, rainbow Rainbowized. Hallelujah, look at that. This is actually a 4X variant. Man, it's a blemish. Oh, look at, look at how powerful that blade is. Um, I would probably not carry this just because of the retention, and I'll show you why. See, look at that. 
it does not it'll stay open a little bit and you'll cut yourself on that and that's not that's not fun believe me because i've cut myself on the next knife here which is the emerson cqc7 and it was just because of the way i was carrying it i really don't I'm not too horribly impressed with Emerson's, but I only have one, so I can't, I guess I can't speak out against them. Um, and seeing I don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of them to compare them, compare to, compare to, what am I trying to say? Like, I, I, I haven't had a lot of experience with them. That's what I'm trying to say. Dang it. Couldn't think of it. I like the idea of them, the wave feature, you know, the wave function I like, but for some reason, a liner on this one's just, it's kind of sticky, and then the retention's not that great. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just mine. You know, I want to give them another try. I want one of their Karam bits, but we'll see. Don't want to shell out the money for that right now. <laughs> well, yeah, shell out the money for that, and I just waste money on a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is basically like a Delica, no, a Delica, uh, an Endura, only with H1 steel, and that is the Spiderco Pacific Salt. And this is actually cool if you're going to be going into a corrosive environment, going to be sweating a lot like I'm doing right now. It's pretty much an Endura, only a little bit more lightweight. It does not have liners in it, so if you're going to be doing heavy cutting tests, not really a knife for it. But if you're going to be going constantly in water, going to be sweating over it, I mean, this is a great... Come on. That's such a weird angle here. This is a great option for that. What are they doing outside? They're doing something out there. One can hear it. Now you can hear my grandfather clock going off. Maybe not. Where do we live? Ah, yeah. The illegal, illegal shred... Uh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's a Shred Viper. I'm like, duh. Shred Viper OTF. They have another model of this that... Oh, and this is actually double-edged. One of the only ways that you can carry a double-edged knife. Oh, this is spring-assisted. See? You have to push the blade out. So it's 100% it's legal. I mean, by Michigan law, it might not be because pressure on the hand... I mean, Michigan law is kind of crazy with the knives. But they have another model of the Shred Viper that actually... Has a button on the side, and when you push it, it there's a bar that would go back and push the blade out. So you push a button up here, which moves a bar in the back, kind of like that, and then it'll spring the blade out. I would not want to be the test case for that that one. That is too much like an automatic, but I still want one, you know, just for the cool factor. Never carried around, really, you know. Uh, CRKT M16 10KZ. So remember that name. Cool little flipper knife. Got this a long time ago, back when I was into playing Battlefield 2. Back when that was still online. Hey, EA. I love Battlefield 2. Put the servers back online. I won't play it again. Uh, this is the CRKT Ripple. Some of these knives, I, I completely forget the names because, you know, it's been so long since I've, I've really played with them. Oh, you can make a joke of that. Um, and this is the Walmart Ripple, the already de-stressed version. The Ripples are pretty cool. I've cut myself on this one because it's really fast. I mean, watch it. See, barely tap it. Got the IKBS ball bearing system. So, you know it's good. You just have to really be careful because it, it's really fast. Really round off. I want one of the good ripples, um, but I just haven't one. I just haven't shelled out the money for it. And it's not necessarily that they're expensive, at least to me. You know, it's just I, I just haven't had a chance. Spider-Co Tenacious. This is my second one, or first, depending on how you look at it. I bought two of them. This one is perfect. Lockup's great. I had one that was kind of trash, so... You know, I made a video on that, kind of talking about it, but that was a long time ago. Nobody remembers it. Uh, first folder, or kind of main folder that I got, and I would show you this, but let's see here. Oh, my God, look at that. Bradley Camara 2. And I just hit something with it. It's the only battle song I own. Well, in my practice comb battle songs, which kind of are garbage. Um, butterfly knives or battle songs are not, in my opinion, a great choice for edc for regality wise a lot of places are illegal and plus i mean it takes too much muscle memory to pull pull them out whole to deploy them and i mean if you're going to use it as an impact you know in, in that'd work but in like a high stress situation if you needed your knife i'm not necessarily you know kill somebody i mean everyone's like oh knife fighting but in like you know to cut a seat belt if you're in a car or something like that you're not going to have the muscle memory i mean it's hard enough to you know take one of these folders and go like that you know when you're under stress so I mean, some knives you can't even open when you're not under stress, so... That's why I'm an advocate of legalizing automatics, because you just push a button and your knife's open. There's no none of this in-between garbage, but... Some of the knives open like an automatic, like this one. The Benchmade Griptilian. Let's go like that, yeah. Look at that blade. Woo! Benchmade Griptilian is awesome. Little nudge on the thumb stud opens up. I put my own custom lanyard on this one. Made out of green paracord, which I actually have in my boots now as bootlaces, because my bootlaces are trashed. 
No one's made a comment that actually it'll work. Hmm. It's only a matter of time. Like WTF is your boot laces. Soggy, just awesome assisted opener. That blade shape reminds me a lot of a kitchen knife, which is one of the reasons why I got it. I really like that blade shape. And uh, now after playing Alice Madness Returns, I really like it. Uh, the only One of the small complaints I got with this, well, first of all, safety. I don't like safeties on knives. Uh-uh, no, no. No, no. And the other one would be the pocket clip. The pocket clip is good. It's very deep carry. However, it can kind of be difficult to get on your pants just because you get a bunch of material bunched up in there and it's a little tight, but... You know, if you're wearing thicker pants like jeans, your soul, S-O-L, out of luck. But other than that, I mean, it works pretty good for pocket clip-wise. So, nice sleek knife, very light. All right, now we're getting into some of the cooler, more expensive ones up here. This is like whole row down like here are some of the, the awesome ones. Uh, this is a Hogue EX-01, which is a beast of a knife. Aluminum handles, huge, thick blade. <laughs> look at that point. One of the best Tanto points that I've seen. Uh... Pot clip, stupid, but still, you know, for what it is, button lock, just awesome. A very authoritative fuck when you open it up. It does have a lock on here, so you slide that up and now you can't close it, which, I mean, that's cool. It turns into a virtual fixed blade, as a lot of companies like to say. Um, oh, wait, actually, how can I, what button, okay, I'm going to see the plunger in there a little bit. Very heavy-duty plunger. Um, I think I just hit the top of my uh, my zero tolerance there a bit. Oh, my God, Nick's. Um... I believe the tolerances on these too, they, they press fit them so tightly that, like they said, once they press fit some of the pivots and stuff, then they're not coming out. So, you know, kudos to Hogue for doing that. Uh, Hogue normally makes gun gun grips, so, you know, they're, they're pretty good with machinery, I guess. Um, probably the one knife here that I would not want to give up in my collection is my, what's it, Microtech Vector 666. I'm sorry, I'm tired today. I, this is my only day off, so thank me for it. I, I worked like five days this week, and by Monday, I already had eight hours of overtime. They're like, yeah, we need you. Like, now. I'm like, okay. So, no overtime, but you're coming in for overtime. So, they're going to try and cut it later on the week at me. Then I'm going to be like, you know what? Um, We're going to be screwed then again. So, yeah. This is what happens when you don't think ahead, and you have set. Never mind. So, <laughs> this is Microtech 666. Where? Focus. Over to the left there, you can see serial number 666. One of the best blade stampings in the world. Awesome knife, too. Listen to that sound. Yeah. Microtex, their folders, the way they open up, are just awesome. Really, really like this one. And I probably would not give it up. Look at green backspaces. Woo! So, there's that guy. Next one. It's a Warren Thomas Baby Bushido prototype. There's actually another YouTuber on here that owned this before me. And then in watching his video of it and then matching up with mine, some of the little... Like, uh, there was a scratch somewhere. I can't remember. It was not necessarily a scratch, but like a little imperfection. I was like, oh, hey, mine got that too. I was like, I think I got your knife. And he was like, yeah, you do. I'm like, cool. This is awesome. Titanium blade. So, I mean, the knife is light as heck. Um, the only problem is, you know, it doesn't really keep it sharp and it's too great. I mean, I don't really cut anything with it because, I mean, I like to collect my knives. But, I mean, the edge just looks awesome. The, the carbonized. If we can focus on that. <whistles> Maybe. Maybe not. Look at the WT. Just kind of cool, kind of reminiscent of a Spyderco because that the opening hole in the blade, but you know, and the color too. I like the color and the name, everything. Uh, one of the holy grails I was going after, and I finally got one. It's a Phantom Steelworks Skinwalker, and I yield. I can open it up. It's a little stiff to open up, but very cool design. I mean, that's it. That's it's locked up there. See, it's it's almost like a karambit, I guess, in its design, but just. Completely murdered out. I mean, the color, the blade, everything of it's just awesome. Whew, got some fuzz on there. I got this use from a guy. He said he needed the money. I kind of felt bad that he had to give it away, but at the same time, I knew it was going to a good home because I'm going to take care of it. I haven't really carried it around just because, you know, first of all, it's an expensive knife, like, you know, 700 I'm not, you know, not that I'm not an advocate of using your expensive blades. It's This just isn't a blade that I really has a practical purpose. And plus, I mean, if I lost it, I'd cry. Not as much as if I lost a vector, but still, I mean, you know, this this was kind of a little grail knife I was going after. And you stopped, unfortunately, um, Chris Martin from Phantom Steelworks stopped making it. So, I had to get on the secondary market. That's why I love eBay! I'm sure I could have got it at a different place. Alright, so, now we have the Chris Reeve Shabanja. This is my Damascus. And wood. I think it's wood. Cool knife. I like it. Look at that edge. Look at how polish that is. And I didn't touch it up or anything because I suck at sharpening. Uh, the little gold accents are a nice touch. This is kind of like if I had a steampunk knife, this would have to be it. 
I just really like the look of it. It looks very old fashioned. Really high tolerances. I don't really carry it that much just because of, you know, it's it's a little too pretty. But I would like to get a regular Sabenza to use it actually. But I mean this one is rounded off the the, the top wait, what was it? Top spine of the blade, just the way it's kind of rounded a little bit. I mean, I don't know, just nice little touches. Um very very smooth action too. Got a Hinder XM eighteen. Probably one of the, out of the Holy Trinity, you know, Hinder, Strider, and Sabenza, um, the Hinder would probably be the nicest, in my opinion, just because, I mean, it's, the tolerances are just awesome, the blade, you know, really smooth, um, the stone washing on the titanium is just awesome, um, I got mine back when they were like $700, now they went down to like, I don't know, like $450, which is a good price for them, you know, if you can, if you can snag one for that price, it's good, the supplies kind of went up a little bit, flip's okay, you gotta give it a little wrist tension, but, you know, Still really, really cool knife. Recommend picking it up to anybody. Pick it up. You can tell I'm just totally out of energy. Uh, here is my Strider SMG. Small, not good. That's what it stands for. <laughs> I'm just getting Tanto. Tiger Stripe Blade. Brown G G10. I couldn't think for a second. I like how they just have the backspacer. You know, it's not a separate piece. It's just milled straight, you know, straight to the handle scale. It makes it a little more expensive doing it that way. But strength-wise, you know, it's really good. And then we got Flame Titanium. Which let's see if we can focus on that. That flame anodizing, it's just awesome. You got the, the lock bar stabilizer as well here. Everybody knows what these are by now. You should. If you don't, you don't die. And now the one knife that really, really got me into uh, knives over $100. I mean, because up until this point, um, the, what you may call it, knife. The Bradley Camaro was my most expensive knife. And then I bought my Griptilian and then this knife, which is a Microtech Socom Elite. You know, I bought them both at the same time. Sokka Malik was like 270 or something. And I got a slight different variation. I ordered, but I like this variation better because the one I ordered had the grip inserts and I actually wanted carbon fiber and they sent me one carbon fiber. And then the screws, the, uh, let's see if we can focus on these guys here. The ones that were shown in the picture, they were Torx and which I guess are more functional, but I wanted the custom uh, Microtech triple point screws. I don't know if you can see those there, but that's not really focusing. But this knife, it just flies open, little tap, bang recoils so light you know one complaint i do have is a glass breaker kind of wiggly but that's okay i've heard that happens on quite a bit of them just a very awesome knife like i said, i don't really carry it much um or the uh the vector i really don't care that much at all just because you know i like them a little too much to risk losing them or or messing them up but if you sat through this what are we up to 20 ah, 22 minutes that's how bad we can still go for another hour um, if you sat through this, thank you. Thanks for the AdSense for you. <laughs> I don't know why I keep bringing it up. It's just funny because like the one person that watches my videos are like, yeah, I'm, I'm giving this guy a penny. I uh, hope you enjoy your day. I want to see some other, um, knife collections from people. Cause I mean, I haven't really looked up a good knife collection in a while. So, and I haven't, you know, like I haven't made one in a while. And cause I, I kind of got out of, I kind of got out of buying knives for a little bit. I, I got into other, other stuff, but I got to get back on track with what I'm, I'm doing. Stay safe.